A storm is raging in Ottawa. But behind the grey walls of the headquarters of the Canadian Security and Intelligence Service, the spies are silent. They've put up a stone wall around one of their most controversial moles. Grant Bristow, a founding leader of the neo-Nazi Heritage Front. Without Grant Bristow, there probably wouldn't have been a Heritage Front. And if there was, I don't believe it would have been uh, as effective. Grant Bristow, in a lot of people's eyes, was seen as a, um, a guru, a god, in a lot of the younger people's eyes. The oppression is just mounting and mounting and mounting, and the time to fight's now. White power! He didn't uh, provide the kind of information that could have convicted these people. He didn't uh, break up their organization. He helped to build it. Bristow has become Canada's best-known spy. But before he got on the government payroll, he had a more modest job. When he was around 20, Bristol worked at this strip club in downtown Toronto. He called himself assistant manager, but spent most of his time running the sound and lights. Owner Don Cullen, a former TV comedian, remembers Bristow as an odd man who first tried his hand as a stand-up comic. Every time he told a joke, he went... or... <sighs> like that. Well, I began to feel very, very strange. Uh, I started to sweat and all the rest of it because I didn't really know what kind of reaction he expected. Did he have any ambitions? Uh, Grant really wanted to be a, a policeman or a private detective or something of that nature. Um, no question about it. He was very, very interested in conspiracies and he had a conspiratorial way about him. Bristol's conspiracies would have to wait a while. He was fired from the strip joint because he drank too much. Bristow came closer to his dream when he went to work as a security investigator for the shipping company Kuhn and Nagel. People here remember him as being a zealous security cop. He was well connected with police forces and kept talking about becoming a real cop, or even better, a spy. He was also openly racist, expressing white supremacist views to his fellow workers. So the next job Grant Bristow would land with the Canadian government was tailor-made for him. In September 1989, Grant Bristow joined a group of Canadians from the far-right fringe traveling to Libya, all expenses paid by the Gaddafi government. Bristow befriended Wolfgang Droge, a rising leader in the racist movement. It was during this trip, participants say, that the seeds were planted for the creation of a new group to unite Canada's neo-Nazis. Peter Matrevsky, a member of the contingent to Libya, recalls Bristow's influence over Droge. He, he was the one that, that pushed for um, Wolfgang and a number of other people to create an, uh, a different organization. He was, uh, I'd say, the, the, uh, the driving force behind it. The organization they created in the fall of 1989 was called the Heritage Front. It would become Canada's largest and best organized neo-Nazi group. The nominal leader was Wolfgang Droge. Now I'd like to introduce to you uh, one of the co-founders of the Heritage Front, Grant, and to give you a few announcements. But his good friend, Grant Bristow, was front and center. When home videos of meetings were marketed by the Heritage Front, Bristow always made sure most of his speeches were removed. But at this meeting, he openly boasts of his founding role. Several years ago, when Jerry, Wolf, myself, some other people sat down and started working on starting and developing an idea and a concept known as the Heritage Front, we knew that one day certain enemies of freedom would come knocking at our door. And Bristow made sure he was a key man in the fight against those enemies. He appointed himself a security director, securities chief. Uh, that included uh, gathering uh, intelligence or counterintelligence, if you wish, 
um, setting up uh, security for the meetings. As security chief, Bristow, on the left in the light blue shirt, was always on hand to help draw game. You know, but if anybody's disruptive, they're going to be asked to leave. But what the Heritage Front didn't know was he was also working for another group, CSIS, Canada's domestic spy agency. Bristow was controlled from this building, the Toronto headquarters of CSIS. The Fifth Estate has learned that his handler is an experienced agent named Al Tradenik. Like many in CSIS, Tredenik is a veteran of CSIS's predecessor, the RCMP's security service. And like all CSIS agents, Tredenik is supposed to run his informant by the book. That means don't instigate anything, don't take a leading role, and don't do anything illegal. Tredenik's man inside the Heritage Front was very busy and very well financed. Any donations that you can make, any and all donations will be greatly appreciated. We do need this money to keep up the fight because I'll tell you As the organization's money man, Bristow didn't just work the crowds. This CSIS man was pouring a lot of cash into the Heritage Front. A top organizer for the neo-Nazis was Ken Barker. Upon setting up an organization, you need funding, you need to travel. Grant Bristow, you know, paid for airplane tickets, uh, car rentals, meals. Court dates, he was always pulling out the plastic, buying everyone meals, 10, 15 people meals. What kind of money are we talking about here? From what I see alone, literally, you know, literally in the thousands, umpteen thousands. In fact, you know, when a few of us got arrested, he made sure there was money in the kitty for us. And, um, you know, he helped out pay for the Heritage Front hotline. The hotline was the centerpiece of the Heritage Front's campaign of hate propaganda. If free speech for whites is denied, we won't be able to address important issues like black crime, homosexuality in the classroom, the Indian problem, or the vile promotion of race mixing, which taints our great race. Bristow wasn't repentant when the Human Rights Commission began investigating the hotline. That we carried a reported message which advocated that non-white people should be refused entry into Canada. The CSIS man simply called on the troops to fight back. You're not going to walk over us because we're not going to lie down. Is this what CSIS informants are supposed to be doing? Absolutely not, says Peter Russell. He was the chief researcher for the McDonald Royal Commission into RCMP wrongdoing. He warns informants can go too far. The informant, uh, to be effective, uh, has to penetrate uh, an organization by dissembling, by pretending to be one of them. Uh, you have to hope and pray that uh, this dissembling, stealthy character uh, is still really acting for the people of Canada and collecting valuable information about this horrible organization and is not actually working for them. How critical is the role of the informant's handler? Handler is absolutely crucial. But Bristow's CSIS handler, Al Tredenik, far from keeping him inside the rules, was right there to pull him out of trouble when he broke them. In September 1991, police swooped down on a car at a busy Toronto intersection and arrested this American racist, Sean McGuire, and found guns in the trunk. The problem was, the man driving the car was Grant Bristow, and the guns in the trunk were his. Peter Matrevsky recalls what happened to his comrades. Sean and Grant were riding in the same vehicle when uh, there was a, uh, I believe, a SWAT tactical takedown. Uh, in which the car was surrounded by uh, police vehicles and um, they came out and they were arrested. Now, Grant was held for some hours, I believe, and then he was let go. And uh, there was not a word spoken after that. McGuire was taken to 41 Division, jailed and eventually deported. But Bristow was whisked away by his handler, Al Tredenik. Well, guess who took Grant down to the police station? Al from CSIS. And he was wearing a blue Metro police jacket. 
Among the sources for our investigation are veterans in the law enforcement field. We can't reveal their identities because of the sensitive nature of their revelations. So an actor will read from transcripts of our extensive interviews. The police were really hot to trot to lay gun charges against Grant. But Al Tredenick was going around saying, hey, he's a friend of ours, which basically meant this was our source. The CSIS man was now in a key position in the organization he helped build. But he wasn't content to sit back and watch events unfold on their own. Now it was time for a little drama. The Heritage Front wanted this leading American neo-Nazi, Tom Metzger, to speak at a major rally in June 1992. Metzger heads war, the white Aryan resistance. The Heritage Front invited us to Canada and uh, from what I could understand, it was the decision of Wolfgang Drogi and Grant Bristow, who were essentially leading the group. There was a problem. Why are you down there arresting the damn Mexican creeps that are, with the guns and the knives? Metzger has inspired his followers to commit some of the worst neo-Nazi violence in the U.S. Metzger had spent six months in jail just prior to his planned trip to Toronto. His criminal record and his neo-Nazi views would be enough to bar him from Canada. Metzger's plan was to fly from California to Buffalo, then try to drive into Canada on Friday, June 26th. Did Grant Bristow know the specifics of your trip? Yes, Grant Bristow knew every detail of the trip. Bristow not only knew, he paid for half the cost of the airline tickets, according to a Heritage Front source. CSIS tipped off the other police forces that Metzger was coming, but never shared specific details about when and where Metzger was crossing into Canada. Everybody was on this panic alert. CSIS was spoon-feeding us the information as it went along. Immigration in Ottawa came down with the order. Stop these people at the border at all costs. The alert went out to the border to keep an eye out. CSIS was aware that immigration's official policy was they wanted them stopped at the border. Nevertheless, around noon Friday, Metzger drove easily into Canada at the Fort Erie border crossing. CSIS then told its police partners that somehow Metzger got into the country. And then the bombshell. CSIS reported that the Heritage Front was planning a confrontation at the Ontario legislature. They were going to storm the Premier's office. All the skinheads and all the Heritage Front members were supposed to gather at Queen's Park and rush Bob Ray's office. And Tom Metzger was supposed to confront Ray. So, of course, now you've got the OPP on alert, you've got Bob Ray's office on alert, and everyone up in Ottawa is shitting their pants. The alert went out two days before a Heritage Front leader remembers finalizing the decision to go to Queen's Park at a meeting Saturday afternoon attended by Grant Bristow, Wolfgang Droge, and Peter Matrevsky. A few hours later, Metzger came to this Toronto meeting hall frequently used by the Heritage Front. Two hundred Canadian neo-Nazis were on hand to cheer the leader of the white Aryan resistance, sporting a toupee, as he boasted of beating up Jews. We cleaned up the floor, we put two in a hospital, and on the next day, on the front page of the San Fernando Daily News, the heart of Jewville was a giant color picture of me duking out this Jew. <laughs> then the big announcement. The leaders tell the troops what CSIS has already told the police. And Monday at noon, we're planning to be at Queen's Park. Come down with us, we're going to present a letter to uh, bring you Bob Ray. There was a warm send-off for Metzger from CSIS's man on the spot. I especially want to thank uh, John and Tom Metzger for making this trip and helping us out the way that they did. Because like I said... What Grant Bristow didn't announce was that there was a little surprise waiting for his guest right after the meeting. As Tom Metzger left, a heavily armed SWAT team, acting on CSIS's information, finally grabbed him. Looking back at it now, Metzger wonders why CSIS waited so long to arrest him, when Bristow knew all along where he was. That was what was so odd about the whole thing. Uh, if, if they were so upset with what type of speech I was going to give, I couldn't understand why they would wait uh, two days and throw us in jail. Why? 
White Canada, wake up! White Canada, wake up! Metzger's arrest gave the angry Heritage Front more publicity. And that night, in apparent retaliation for the arrest, three synagogues in Toronto were defaced with Nazi slogans. We gotta straighten out that Canada, man. A few days later, Metzger was deported across the border. The whole operation looked like a smashing success for CSIS. We're gonna wreck the free trade agreement. CSIS made themselves heroes in everybody's books, when in fact they manufactured the entire incident. Sure enough, we caught the Metzgers. An Al Tradenic CSIS unit gets this huge pat on the back. Commendations, great work, we're really thankful. Hey, but wait a second. They staged the entire affair. So basically, what you had was an incident that was actually staged by CSIS. And who comes riding into the sunset but CSIS to save the day? And Bristol was going to keep things rolling. Six months later, in December 1992, Metzger says Bristol paid him a visit in California. He brought me some lists of these people that I'm interested in. These people were what we consider top Zionist money people who fund and who are the brains behind several of the big Jewish groups in Canada. Did Grant Bristol just give you the names? No, he gave us the addresses, the cities, License sometimes numbers? telephone numbers. What are you going to do with this list as part of your white Aryan resistance? They would be targeted. Metzger claims CSIS's man also gave him money, but he won't say how much. Believe me, it was enough money that the average Canadian taxpayer would be shocked. If an agent comes to us and he is working for the government and he wants to give us money with no uh, strings attached, uh, we take it. With enemies like these people, who needs friends? CSIS's man played a key role in creating and financing Canada's largest neo-Nazi group, in setting up its hate line, and in orchestrating the Metzger affair. It was all good business for CSIS, but did anyone know what CSIS and Bristol were up to? Trudenik's secret work with Bristol was certainly common knowledge among various police forces. In May 1992, intelligence officers began holding regular meetings to monitor hate crimes. Bristow's handler, Al Tredenik, came to these meetings, as did two other CSIS officers, RCMP officers, the Ontario Provincial Police, Metro Toronto Police, and Immigration Authorities. The Fifth Estate has confirmed that all of the police forces present eventually found out that CSIS had a top informant inside the Heritage Front, and that it was Grant Bristow. At CSIS headquarters in Ottawa, they also had to know about the Heritage Front operation, because the marching orders for Canada's spies come from the top. Philip Bebo was deputy director of CSIS until 1991, when the Bristol operation was underway. Approval has to be signed by the director, has to be co-signed by the Ministry of Justice and the Solicitor General's representative. Did you sit on the committee that gave approval for the Heritage Front operation? I will neither confirm nor deny that I have any personal knowledge of that case in particular. How tightly controlled is a human source? I need to say that, of course, it is very tightly controlled. In the field, the sources involved, the human sources involved in delicate uh, infiltration operations are seen weekly, sometimes daily. So information provided by an informant goes pretty high up the chain of command. The information provided by human source goes all the way up the chain of command. We'll find out from CSIS first. Watching over the entire chain of command in CSIS are these people, the Security Intelligence Review Committee, or CERC. They are private citizens named by the federal government to be the people's watchdogs over the spy agency. The annual reports of CERC show that as far back as 1991 and 1992, CERC knew CSIS was infiltrating racist extremist groups. They even warned that one operation was likely to generate controversy, but they gave no specifics. Montreal lawyer Jacques Courtois, chairman of CERC. In your 1991-92 report, the review committee examined how CSIS investigated threats from racist extremists. Yes. You found one operation likely to generate controversy and the possibility of unlawful activity. Right. Are we talking about the Heritage Front operation here? Uh, I don't think we mentioned Heritage Front. 
And I don't think I should. Can you say it wasn't Grant Bristow and the Heritage Front? I'm not saying it is, I'm not saying it's not, I can't tell you. Cirque officially can't tell us, but insiders say that when accused of being asleep at the switch over the Grant Bristow affair, Cirque indicates that it did warn the government about Bristow. It points to a top secret report, in its words, describing our concerns about possible unlawful activities. Cirque sent that report to then Solicitor General Doug Lewis in July 1992. That would mean the people at the top from CSIS to the senior cabinet minister in charge, knew about Grant Bristow's activities as far back as two years ago. The Heritage Front is the Nazi Front! Smash the Heritage Front! If officials were staying silent about the Heritage Front, anti-racists in Toronto were making their opposition loud and clear. Smash the Heritage Front! By the start of 1993, the Heritage Front was under attack on the streets. And while Grant Bristow may have been paid to watch the Heritage Front, he now spent most of his time watching its enemies. This Heritage Front video shows Bristow as the security chief, keeping a watchful eye on anti-racist protesters. What are you going to do with all our pictures, these bloody intimidation tactics, eh? You're going to hand them to the boys, all the guys that have phoned me and harassed me? That's exactly what Bristow was doing. He set up and trained teams of Heritage Front members to harass opponents. Former Heritage Front member Ken Barker. Grant had a list of well over 70 leftists in opposition, name, addresses, phone numbers, and probably employment for probably at least 50% of them, if not more. He uh, recruited people to do phone harassments, coached them, told them how to do it, what to say, taped it while they did it. Oh, you motherfuckers, because this is the third way. Race charge, 11. Faggot. We're going to fucking blow your fucking brains out, you goose. Kevin Thomas, as one of the anti-racist leaders, says he even got calls from Grant Bristow himself. I guess the bulk of them actually were just plain abusive. He'd call me a repulsive little shithead or uh, call me a loser or a coward or whatever you could think of. Kevin Thomas is targeted for harassment. Who targets him? Grant Bristow. What does Grant Bristow say about Kevin Thomas? Well, that he's nothing but a virulent homosexual, stricken with AIDS, a uh, piece of biological pollution. When you're taking on neo-Nazis, you go in expecting that it's going to be dirty and it's going to be violent, um, because that's the nature of a neo-Nazi organization, like the Heritage Front. <laughs> But you don't expect that to come from the government. You don't expect it to be somebody who's actually paid to go and do that and to orchestrate it and to organize other people to do it. You don't expect them to uh, have someone paid to make phone calls, uh, to make threats, to make uh, your life miserable. Police sources say CSIS knew exactly what Bristol was up to. They're aware of criminal acts that were going to occur, but they allowed the acts to occur so they could protect the identity of their source. Desecration of synagogues, intimidation of people, threats against people. Minor stuff, maybe. But if someone kept on calling you 25 times a day and saying they were going to get you, it's not that minor to you. Let's get the word out. One of the Heritage Front members Bristow recruited for his phone harassment campaign was Elise Hadigan, a frequent speaker at the neo-Nazi meetings. A certain vile, alien people have taken control of our country. When the day comes, we will not ask you whether you swung to the right or whether you swung to the left. We will simply swing you by the neck. This is war. But in the fall of 1993, Elise Hadigan walked away from the Heritage Front and turned against her former comrades. She then became a victim of Bristol's harassment. Finally, she filed over 30 affidavits with the Ontario Provincial Police, detailing, among other things, Bristow's central role in Heritage Front activities. Police sources say CSIS panicked. When Elise came out and said she was going to tell the truth, CSIS was saying they were going to go out and discredit her because Elise Hadigan was pointing the finger at Grant Bristow. He ordered this, he masterminded that, I remember Al Tredenick was really livid over the thing. He said, we'll tear her to shreds. The OPP never acted on Hadigan's affidavits, but it was the beginning of the end for Grant Bristow. 
CISIS's man in the Heritage Front was getting too much publicity, too much heat. In May 1994, Bristow had his last meeting with his old friend Wolfgang Droge. He revealed to Droge he had contact with CISIS. Then Grant Bristow said goodbye and dropped out of sight. But not for long. In August, the Toronto Sun newspaper publicly identified Bristow as a CISIS informant. His cover was blown. Bristow's career was unraveling in public. A huge embarrassment for CSIS. Right. The Bristow affair raised a lot of questions about CSIS, but don't try asking them in person. They weren't returning our phone calls, so we went to their office. Yes, sir. I have a letter here for um, Grant Bristow and for Alter Denick, his okay, handler. Could you make sure he gets it? Yes. Thank you. So far, we haven't heard from them. The only CSIS man who is talking is Philip Bibeau, the former deputy director. If he helped create the Heritage Front, is he crossing the line? If he helped create something which would not have existed without him, yes, that would be going too far. Telling Heritage members to get on the telephone and harass, threaten innocent Canadians, is that crossing the line? Th that would be crossing the line. But in this case, in an operation that's been going on for several years, shouldn't his handler, his CSIS handler, Al Trudenik, know that his source is out there and what his source is doing? Well, he knows that the source is out there. He knows that the source is infiltrating the group. But he may not know from moment to moment what the source is actually doing. You have a set of controls that go all the way from the top of CSIS to the handler, and it seems inconceivable that CSIS didn't know what its informant was doing. If all the allegations are true, I really don't know what happened. I, I, I can't comprehend that, that, that a source could do what you have said he was doing for so long without CSIS coming to put a stop to it. First of all, Mr. Chairman, may I explain what we are doing? To figure out what did go wrong, the Security Intelligence Review Committee has launched a special inquiry. In an exclusive interview with the Fifth Estate, CERC Chairman Jacques Courtois talked about his investigation. What we're seeing is that Grant Bristol was not only gathering information, but he was out there on center stage of the Heritage Front fanning the flames of hatred. Mr. Malarek, I think you'll find in a lot of uh, organizations that are infiltrated, in order for an informant to get the confidence of the organization, he has to appear to be one of them. It's been more than six weeks since the Grant Bristol affair yes. became public. You'd think that the minute that this broke, you'd get on the telephone to CSIS and say, get that handler and his informant into my office now. We have four investigators full-time, two part-time, and before we haul Bristow in front of us, what is important is to know all the facts so we can ask the proper questions. If Grant Bristow comes to testify before you, does he get immunity? If he testifies under oath, the law provides that he can get immunity for what he says. So if Grant Bristow tells you chilling, disturbing stories, Yes. In the end, he gets away with it. That's the law. Grant Bristow has not been seen in his Mississauga home since early September. Police sources say CSIS is keeping him under wraps in a safe house. CSIS is scared Grant will blow his lid. But what they're scared of is Grant's going to say, yeah, yeah, we desecrated Jewish synagogues, we threatened people's lives, we were throwing rocks through windows, and we were manufacturing incidents, and we were doing all of this on the instructions of CSIS. What did CSIS get out of this operation? Nothing. They didn't even get one guy for spray painting one synagogue. They got nobody for nothing. Former Heritage Front activist Ken Barker. What did CSIS? get out of the Heritage Front? You tell me. Nothing that I can see of any importance. Was it worse the perhaps alleged $250,000 he obtained over the five-year service? Was it? All I know that the, the internally there was no criminal activities in the Heritage Front until Grant Bristow instigated it. You make it sound like Grant Bristow created all the troubles, but you and the Heritage Front are not all a bunch of choir boys. No, they were not. Grant Bristow brought the wood, he brought the kindling, he brought the match. 
he lit it. And the troops take up the torches and keep on lighting. Hey, the torches are lit, and many today, the seed is planted.